What's up? Welcome back to Corner Balance. Hopefully you guys are out there getting that bread. I'm just out here chilling in the middle of nowhere in some random parking lot. Uh, probably still need to get a haircut, all that stuff. But anyway, as you guys own a car for a little bit, that's when you come to realize what its unique set of features and quirks are. And the Porsche 93 is no exception to that rule. This car actually has a lot of weird quirks. And in this video, I'm going to detail for you guys 15 of those quirks. Some of these quirks will be, I guess, backwards compatible because we all know these air-cooled Porsches, these 911s, they didn't really change all that much over the decades. But anyway, without further ado, without further delay, let's go ahead and get started with this list. Okay, my friends, for quirk number one, I would like to turn your attention to the side mirrors on the 993. Observe, this is the driver's side side mirror. Check out its positioning, I guess, relative to the fender and the door. And if I look at this squared and dead on, there's something kind of weird about the uh, passenger side side mirror over there. The 93 actually has completely asymmetrical side mirrors. So again, driver's side, passenger side. It's behind the A-pillar versus the driver's side, which is almost in front of the A-pillar. And if I come over here and I zoom out a little bit, look at that. That thing is really lopsided. Okay, for quirk number two, check out how close together the 993 front windshield wipers are. On most production cars, they're actually way more spread out and they follow each other. While on the 993, these wipers actually sweep in one motion as if they were one giant wiper. Because of how close they are in terms of their own proximity, you have to have this little rubber pad thing to divide them up and not cling together when they sweep. Quirk number three, the quintessential turbo twist wheels. These are of course directional. So on the left-hand side, the driver's side, it looks like they're spinning towards the front, or at least that's what their orientation looks like. But because Porsche didn't make a left-hand side and right-hand side specific version of these wheels, they're all the same on all four corners. That means on the passenger side of the car, they're going to be spinning backwards. So as you can see here, it looks like they're spinning towards the back versus the driver's side was spinning towards the front. Number four, the correct orientation, or as they say for the Porsche Crest center caps, is to have the pointy end of the crest be an arrow to where the valve stem is. This has roots in racing because when these cars come into the pits, uh, you want to be able to easily look at the center caps, know where the valve stem is, go do your thing. And since we're talking about racing, this may be more common knowledge, but the ignition switch position for Porsches are on the left-hand side. And I believe this is a Le Mans inspired thing because the drivers back then actually had to line up and do these running starts. So having the ignition switch on the left-hand side allowed them to have a key on their left hand while using the right hand in parallel to put the gear lever into first and get going faster. All right, so we're at quirk number six. So if you've never driven a 993 or an air-cooled 911 before, the very first thing you're going to notice is the four hinged pedals. Unlike a lot of other German cars where usually the gas pedal is going to be floor hinged, the clutch, brake pedal, and gas pedal are all floor hinged. It's a pretty weird experience because it looks like, you know, as you can kind of see here, the pedals are basically coming straight at you. Uh, but once you get used to it, it feels great. Number seven, the driver ergonomics and alignment of everything, all the controls are kind of weird. Like again, going back to the floor mounted uh, pedals, they're all the way over there to the right hand side. And if you look at the seat, this seat is not exactly in line with the center of the steering rack either. So the steering rack is actually shifted to the right as well. And the pedals are even more to the right. And although this sounds bad, when you're actually driving the car, it doesn't feel weird at all. It's not like you're super contorted or anything like that. It's just a little bit shifted. Uh, and again, you don't really notice it. Quirk number eight is going to be the timeless interior of the 993. That dash pad is actually very similar to the same one that's been used since 1965. So an interesting thing is, based off of my research, Porsche actually had a prototype development of a completely new interior design, but because they were also in financial straits, dire financial straits back in the 90s, they couldn't put it out to production. So they actually just kept the original style interior, and I'm so glad that they did. And some additional hallmarks of this timeless interior are, of course, the five horizontal gauges uh, and the very random layouts of all the different buttons. Like you have the window switches here, uh, switch here, bunch of switches there just like switches scattered all over the place but that is the porsche 911 way hey really quick i just want to add on one more thing to the haphazard layouts of the 911 interior so i'm sitting in the driver's seat right now this is my driver's view ignore the scratched uh, emblem on the airbag i'm actually getting this entire airbag redone as we speak but that is uh off topic anyway this is my driver's view so i can see and access the radio just fine i can see and access the switches down here just fine as well but the climate controls those are another story so again, driver's view, climate controls, over here to the right-hand side behind the steering wheel. So the only way to really get to them is while you're driving is to sort of feel your way around 
hit the AC button, all that stuff, or you just gotta lean all the way over and then see them. But that's the way it's done. So as I sit in this thing for cork number nine, one thing that you will notice that is unique to these 911s is just the greenhouse effect that you get in this car. Like all the windows around you are very open. Uh, of course, the A pillars are pretty high up and these A pillars are super skinny. So again, the visibility and greenhouse in here is amazing. You can see everything, hardly any blind spots. Okay, we are making our way up to cork number 10 and that is going to be the famous door shut of the 993. That's one of the best sounds ever. And honestly, this is one of my favorite quirks of the 93 and 911s in general, because it's very hard to replicate a door shut sound like that. I mean, that thing just feels amazing. It feels tactile every time you open and shut the door. Have a listen again. Let me open the door and shut it. It's beautiful. And segueing off of the door shut goes into cork number 11. This is going to be hard to capture on film, but that is going to be the overall build quality of the 993, which is extremely good, extremely high. Everything inside this car is extremely tight. There are no rattles, there are no shakes, there are no weird creaks or sounds like that. Again, the door feels super solid, feels like you're closing a vault. I feel like the build quality thing, although it's hard to really put your finger on, is a very important characteristic to judge cars by because that is hard to do. Like it's not easy to make a car like this that's so well made. So I know this cork is a little bit long winded, but again, not all cars are made equal. And if you have an appreciation for well built things, well engineered things, this is it. Cork number 12, we're getting kind of close to the end of the list here, but that's going to be the classic roof line of the 911 and also the rain gutter. I mean, this car in particular for mine is a 1998 and this thing still has a rain gutter, just like a classic car, which is super cool. But again, for the roof line, this has been completely unchanged since 1974. Number 13 is going to be the active arrow on this 993. Of course, the 993 wasn't the first car to do it, but nonetheless, it does have it. So on this deck lid here, this grill is actually a spoiler and that will go up by itself once you hit about 50 miles an hour. And then it'll go back down by itself once you slow down to around seven miles an hour. I think that's pretty cool because it gives the car two different looks. You know, usually when you're cruising on the freeway, you'll have it up. Um, and of course, when you're parked, you have the nice sloping back line of the 911 again. Cork number 14, obviously these cars are going to be air-cooled, but because they're air-cooled, they have to rely on their oil system much more than other cars to help keep them cool. And because of that, these are actually dry-sumped cars. So the oil sump is going to be back here around this area. And also, there are two filters that you have to change when you do an oil change on the 993. There is a typical size oil filter that you have to change on the crankcase, and then there's a second oil filter, which is like way bigger that you have to change for the sump itself. Okay, for quirk number 15, the last quirk on this list, I'm going to start this off with something that's obvious, which is these 911s are of course rear engined. But one thing that you will notice between the turbo models on the 93 and the non-turbo, which is like this one, a C2S, is that the turbo model engines in particular have their engines mounted 40 millimeters even more rearward than the non-turbo ones. And that is pretty interesting because the engines are right about here uh, behind the wheels, but the turbo ones are even a little bit more towards the back. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. Those are the 15 quirks I've compiled for the Porsche 993. I would love to hear in the comments which one of the 15 quirks stood out to you to be the most interesting. And also let me know if I've missed anything. So if you guys found this video interesting, even like somewhat, maybe, maybe give it a like, you know, that'd be super sick. If you didn't like the video, I don't know what to tell you. Um, Subscribe. If you didn't like the video, subscribe to the channel. You'll see more videos that you don't like. And I'll see you guys next time here on Corn and Balance. Peace out.